Welcome back to the channel. I fancied together a plaque for a friend of mine down in the States. Gave me the opportunity to use a few new supplies that I picked up lately for the laser, but it also gave me the chance to make a whole lot of mistakes. I'm going to share both of those today with you, so hopefully you don't make the same mistakes. Today on Laser Nug. So a YouTube friend of mine from my other channel, GP Outdoors, sells firewood for a living. He's down in Ohio, and each year he puts on a big event in May. It's called the International Firewood Expo. A whole bunch of folks come in, a whole bunch of exhibitors or manufacturers. I'd like to go, but unfortunately I can't make it again this year. But I did promise him I'd send some merch that I'd laser up for him to maybe help out or contribute a little bit in some way to the big event. And while I was sitting around yesterday, I decided I'd put together a sign for him or a plaque for his business out of just some of the inventory or the scraps that I have here on my shelves. And as I mentioned on the last or the second last video, I picked up a couple of new materials for the laser that I haven't tried out yet. So I thought it'd be a great idea to put a bunch of stuff together. So I decided to blend in a number of different types of acrylics, a couple of different true flat products, as well as using a couple of new other products that I picked up recently. And I'll share those with you as we go through the mistakes <laughs> I made at the end of this video. Hopefully the mistakes or the learnings will help you folks out, especially if you're new like me, and give you the opportunity to also see some other products that I've just started using myself or testing out. So let's jump onto the computer and get this going. Before we jump into Lightburn, let's take a look at what the original or his company logo and tagline looks like. So you'll see here the different colors, whether it's on his business name, the logo itself, as well as his tagline, and his phone number's up there. So I thought I'd take those elements and put them together just in a 15 by 10 inch plaque. So in Lightburn here, I've already taken his logo and his information. I've created a small sign, 15 and a quarter by 10 and a quarter. And that size was based largely on some of the spare materials that I have sitting in my inventory shelf. I, I didn't purchase anything for this, but I also wanted to try out some of that cool Romark stuff as well. So I'll do that. Like with any of the stuff I work on, I always, before I touch it, I duplicate it. So once I've finalized it, grouped it, I always create a copy and I send it off to the side. And the reason I do that is because I'm still in that learning stage. Although it's been about just a little over a year, I still sometimes in the middle of trying to do a project or use the laser, I'll accidentally click something or do something that's kind of goofy and I can't find a way to recover from it. At least I have an exact coffee with exact sizing sitting on the side that I can go back to. Because he has a firewood business, I want to put a lot of wood grain in there. So I'm going to be using some True Flat products. True Flat is one eighth of an inch thick. And for a backer, uh, even though the sign is only 15 by 10 inches, I want a thicker backer. So I'm going to take a piece of MDF as well and cut that in and then use some 3M467 MP to glue them together. And that'll give me a little more structural support to the sign. So before I start cutting out all my pieces, the first thing I need to do is I need to make a template for all of these different pieces that are gonna go in. Sometimes on smaller projects, I'll just score or put score lines in so I can line up my layered pieces. But as you know, hands are not as steady as they used to be. So on something like this, I'm gonna grab a piece of 1 16th MDF and I'm gonna cut out a template of this whole piece here. That way, as I go forward and I start to put it together, I'll know exactly where the letters go and I won't have to try to eyeball putting the letters or the pieces on top of the score marks. It's, it's just for me, it's $1.62 well spent because now I know I won't have to guess or try to line up score marks. So let's get at it, my friends. I'm also gonna be trying two different new types of adhesive today. The first one is this stuff called Dual Tight. I've seen a lot of it on YouTube. I know that KGB 
handles it. I've usually used the 3M467 MP, but we're gonna give this a shot on this project. And I've also got another adhesive we're gonna use later on. A few other laser supplies I have now that I'm trying out today for the first time is from a company called Wishing Star Design. They're out in Western Canada. They sell a number of different products, but they also sell some laser supplies. And you can see here, they've got pre-cut felt pads, which are great for the, the back of backers on your plaques or door hangers or signs. They also have these pre-cut 3M sheets in different shapes, so different size circles or squares or rectangles. They also sell this silicon 3M pad, which acts as a great bumper, again, for the example, on the back of a door hanger or anything that's gonna bump against things. But this is one of my favorites here. This is 3M, but it's in a quarter inch strip and it comes in a big roll. And this provides a great example of where this comes in handy. When you're cutting borders, whether it's out of wood or acrylic or anything, you may find that when you're trying to get the adhesive on, you're either gonna to try to cut it manually out of a 12 by 20 sheet and see if you can line it up where, you, where the laser's gonna cut, or you end up with a lot of waste. And when you're looking at borders or different kinds of odd shapes or smaller shapes, having the strip here is so much easier and so much less waste and more efficient in my view to be able to just slide that strip down, tack it down, minimal waste, super quick and super easy and it fits, you know, you cut it to whatever shape or length that you have. And it just saves you having to waste or break an entire 12 by 20 sheet, which you may want to otherwise use on a full sheet for another job. And it also allows you to cut it to the size of smaller pieces without having to try to cut a circle or anything out of a big sheet. So some great products there. This is the first time I'm using it and I'm pretty glad I have it now. I'm using three different types of adhesive on this project. The first one is my standard go-to 3M467 MP. That's what I've been using for over a year now since I started. It's a great adhesive, as many of you know. It's rated for both indoor and outdoor use, and it's also rated for hot and cold temperatures. I'm also using the Dual Tight for the first time. I picked it up from uh, KJP Hardwoods here. I also like the fact that the adhesive side that you put onto your product is vinyl or at least it's slippery. I think it's some type of vinyl. So when you're cutting small pieces especially, it's obvious and quick to identify which side of your product has the adhesive and which side has the mask. But the dual tight, I'm still working on trying to figure out what the specs on it are because I can't find specifications for it online. I do see that a lot of people are selling it, but I don't know what the rating is for it as far as what its use is for or what its tolerance to temperature and those kind of things are. But I'd like to find out because it is pretty quick and simple to use, goes on just as easy or easier than the 3M does. And it's also about 30 or 35% cheaper than the 3M sheets or the 467. The third type of adhesive I'm using in the project is that quarter inch roll of 3M as well as a couple of the circles or the shaped smaller 3M adhesives. They're all made out of this 9448A. And this 3M product, again, has high adhesion in both hot and cold temperatures. Most impressively, it's also been tested to have high adhesion at as low as negative 20 degrees Celsius. So that's pretty good stuff, I think. In fact, it might even be better than the 467 MP. It appears to be just as thin as the 467. So I'll be looking forward to getting some feedback from my buddy to see how well each of these adhesives held up down in the weather in Ohio. So let's take a look at the piece. 
We'll talk about the different types of materials I used, what was good and what was bad, and most importantly, <laughs> let's go over the mistakes I made putting this thing together. It's 15 and a quarter by 10 and a quarter. As you can see here, I used a true flat maple. I also put a 1 8 inch MDF backer just to give it strength. And I used a matte finish black acrylic for the border. Orange glossy, white glossy, true flat walnut for the logs. I used a hunter green glossy acrylic for his, his business name to match his website. And if I was doing this as a paid deal, I certainly would have found some acrylic that better matched his tagline. But this was pretty close and it was a translucent first time I've used it. And I did the numbers in another new product that I bought a few weeks ago. I'd mentioned on the last video, I think it was, I used the Romark Color Cast, which came out really cool, had a great effect. This is what they call reverse laser mark. Comes in a number of different colors, but it also gives you, surprisingly, that same dimensional design. It's coated on one side, but it looks like it's coated on two with a clear middle, which gives it a pretty cool effect. So overall, I think it looks pretty good. Got a chance to try out a few different adhesives that I hadn't used before, and also a few different types of acrylic. But let's talk about where I went wrong. You may want to get a coffee for this. It's a long list. Normally when I'm putting layers together, especially when I'm doing a backer, I'll always jig up a 90 degree square corner or two so that I can make sure that my sheets all line up and become perfectly square and all the edges line up. I figured, you know, it's only 15 by 10. I was feeling pretty confident. I thought I'd just do it by eye. You know, thought I'd get it together. And from a distance, you can't tell, but I can tell. And if you look closely, you'll see I didn't square them up properly. When the glue hit and once I pressed that adhesive, I've got about a one millimeter overlap on the bottom here and on the top up here. In essence, I had my 1 8 inch MDF. I had my true flat and they went like this, just to exaggerate it. So they're not square. Now I could put some masking tape around this acrylic edge and I could take a sander and just sand off these sides to make it look kind of okay from the front. Uh, I'm not gonna do that given the, the job that it is and it's not a paying job. If it was a paying job, I would have started all over. Well, if it had been a paying job, I would have squared up the jig and made sure that they lined up the first time. The second piece, if you take a look at her, I used the offset tool like I would to try to make this border. Not a problem. Everything seemed to turn out okay. But this is one of those times where once again, I've clicked something. It's happened to me once or twice. I don't know what I did in there while I was playing around with it. But somehow, if you'll notice, all three sides are the exact same width, except this one. Somehow I made, <laughs> I cut this one to go a couple of millimeters wider. And you can actually tell if you look. And in fact, not only that, but when I used the tools in Lightburn to make sure that I had this perfectly lined up in the middle, it is in the middle between this point and this point. It's not in the middle of the whole board. Let's take a look at the rest of it. My orange flame turned out okay. I maintained the aspect ratio of the logo, which is important because especially if you're working with somebody's design work, you don't want to change their actual logo in any way. I used the maple true flat for the backer and I purposely ran the grain vertically just to give it a bit of a different look. However, these are firewood logs here, but if you look closely, the walnut grain is running up and down or vertically. The grain should be running or at least the bark should be running horizontally. And so what I should have done is spun this in light burn to make sure that when I cut these logs, it was cutting horizontally across the sheet in the laser. It's not a big deal, but again, if this was a, a paid project, I definitely would never have left this with the grain running in the wrong direction. His tagline, family, friends, and firewood. This is not the exact color from his logo. If I had been working this as a project, I definitely would have found a piece of acrylic that more closely matched that darker, more kind of a purple red color that he has in his logo. You may also notice that there were two lines, one on the top and one on the bottom, and they're missing. That's because when I, threw this in and I didn't change the aspect ratio on it, the line was so minute or the width of it that I couldn't stick it. I couldn't stick either one of these lines. And what I should have done is I should have recognized that in light burn. I should have ungrouped, 
this tagline, I should have taken each of those horizontal lines and I should have expanded or made them thicker so that they had enough volume that I would have been able to stick them on. So they're missing. Fonts. This I've learned before and I should not have done this time. These fonts are way too tiny. You may have noticed already all of the dots off the eyes are missing. And the reason for that is because the dots were so tiny, I couldn't get them to stick. They're just far too tiny because the font itself is too tiny. If this had been maybe an Arial bolded type font, with, which would have given me thicker letters, I probably could have worked with it. But this is a very wispy font. If you take a look at the Fs, the Y, the A, the S. One of the benefits of that bolt with the 1.5 lens is that it has such a tiny precise dot size that it can cut literally wafer thin characters or letters or any types of designs. However, the negative of it is, of course, is when you have a wispy kind of font where you're, for example, on the S, it thins right out at the top of the bottom. The bottom of the Y thins right out the top and the middle of the F. Various different spots, including the dot, are so wispy that you literally, if you sneeze, they break. They're so fragile because the font itself and the type of font is way too tiny to put on a plaque. The Ohio Woodburner font, that was a good size. It was small, but it was very manageable. As you can see, I could get the dot on there. The letters, although they thin out, for example, on the O's, they had enough volume that they could stick fine and they worked out okay. I probably should have taken the name font. I should have stretched it out to make it larger and that would have allowed me to take his tagline and then also bring that larger without ruining any of the aspect ratio of either one. I have a funny feeling at some point he's going to call me and tell me the F's fell off or something fell off because there's not a lot holding that on. The numbers down here, they turned out really nice. This is that reverse laser mark that I got from Romark. And similar to the color cast, it's only coated on one side on the back, which is the part that I put the adhesive on. But you'll see again, that black color somehow gets reflected through the clear and shows up like it's colored on the top. And these turned out really nice. I think if I did it again, I would have bolded the numbers just to give them again more volume. But either way, they stuck okay. And you've got that great effect again, as we talked about before. If you can see that, it's black. The, you can see the number once, you see clear, and then you see a black top. And I think that's a really, really cool effect for any type of sign. I love it, actually. And I'm going to use that more often. To finish it off, we're going to use some jute rope. I was thinking about putting some hangers on here, but I have a feeling this will most likely end up in one of his outbuildings on his woodlot. And so I think that jute rope kind of has that outdoorsy firewood look to it. Plus it'll give him an easy hang anywhere he wants to hang it. We'll get it glued on there. And then I'm going to take some of these pre-cut felt pads that I got from Wishing Star, as well as these pre-cut circles with the 3M. And I'm going to stick them on the back two over where I've glued the rope just to kind of clean it up a bit and then one on each corner at the bottom just in case he is putting it on a wall in his office or somewhere so it's got a little bit of a buffer. Found a number of new products which I've tried out for the first time. Learned a lot which I hope was helpful to all you good folks. So that's a wrap as I always say. I'm going to grab this stuff and run it in the house and get it all glued up. I hope you found it helpful or informative and got to see a couple of new supplies or different types of acrylic that we haven't used before. Have a wonderful week and please be kind to each other and I'll see you again right here. I'm Gord Potter and you've been watching LaserNug. Cheers.